K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. You know what time it is, so sit back and get ready for the Stafford Voice, your dose of conservative in a world of liberal. Three, two, one. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Outside the studio, I don't know what's going on. There's like red and blue all over the place. I promise it wasn't me this time. But, you know, I am your host, Daniel Stafford, and you are listening to The Stafford Voice, where, yes, we are conservative in a world of liberal. And tonight, wow, we've we've got another jam-packed night. We, uh, you know... We're going to talk about playing the cards you're dealt with, uh, which kind of goes in context with um, something that's kind of dear to me. Um, Eleven years ago on this day, I I've, I lost my mother to breast cancer. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but ISIS is out destroying um, more ancient landmarks. Hillary Clinton on gun control. Um, if we can get in on the uh, changes that are effect that are probably going to take effect over um, an effect over a million members of the military and their families, we will um, we'll talk about that. And yes, we've got a little bit of campaign roundup for you. And as always, on this day in history, and our last closing segment of who said that? So. That's a lot of a lot of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get right into things. But before we do, there are many, many ways to listen. So wherever you're at, set this channel as a favorite. Whatever you have to do so you don't get left behind. And if for some strange, crazy reason you do miss the show, well, we've got a handful of people that are going to come after you and they're going to waterboard you. They're going to shove some earbuds into your ears and they're going to force you to listen. Okay, not so much. But you can catch the replay, so just sit tight. There is no need to panic because, hey, I've got you. And in the case you aren't already following on social media, find me over on the Twitters at Stafford Voice. Look me up on Facebook. All you got to do is search for the Stafford Voice. Follow Politatainment as well. You know, probably the funniest, most nonsensical group that's out there, which is... None other than Angie and Clay. Um, But then you've also got the hilarious duo that just slap each other for an hour. Mainly it's just Sam ripping Jason with a chainsaw freshly sharpened. But you know what? Find them. Give them some love for me. um, And be sure to give some love to the station and all of our affiliates. We just picked one up um, late last week. Uh, So grateful for that. Uh, you can stay up to date with anything and everything that's going on over at politattainment.net and thestaffordvoice.com. And since you're already there, I would love if you could take a few short minutes to fill out a quick little survey at the top of the page. It's Uncle Sammy's, and it's Uncle Sam, and he's just going to reach through the screen and force you to do it. You're not forced to do it, but it would mean a lot to me if you would take less than five minutes to answer answer five short, brief questions. I'd love to get some feedback from you. And none of this could be done without your help. Uh, we are a fully funded, fully listener-funded show, that is. And part of that is because you guys do a lot of shopping on Amazon. And if you're on either one of those sites, politattainment.net or thestaffordvoice.com, you can help support this show by just going about your normal shopping business over at Amazon. All you have to do is just do us a favor and follow. Just click on one of the Amazon ads, and it's it, 
It's not going to put any malware on your phone. It's not going to do anything to your computer. All it's going to do is it's going to send you over to Amazon, and you can you can fulfill your orders that way. It's really, really easy, and with your help, um, we will continue to be able to hit the airwaves and bring you quality or non-quality content, whichever, which, whichever you decide. But playing the cards you're dealt, I'm not a gambler, but... I realize that sometimes you're dealt some pretty crappy cards in life. And sometimes you're dealt a really, really good hand. But if you always look forward into the into the not so distant future, you will realize and remember that Despite the fact you're only holding five to seven cards, I think most of the time you're only holding five cards. Again, that just shows my <laughs> my level of knowledge on playing cards. But you've got your handful of cards, and you have to remember there are more cards in the deck. That when you go through life and you're hit with so many different challenges, you can toss one card away reach over to that deck and grab another one. Well, 11 years ago, I was dealt a pretty crappy hand. And even before that, in nine years ago, nine years prior to that, so 19 years ago, 19 years ago, I was handed one of the worst, um, one of the worst hands somebody could probably ever be given. We found out that my mother had breast cancer. Okay, well, you know what? There's more cards in the deck. We're going to continue to play this game out. And we know that there are better cards in our future. And, you know, you guys are long-time listeners. Um, I don't want to bore you with the horrific details of that nine-year battle... But 11 years ago, on this day, on October 5th, I got that phone call that you never want to get. Super early in the morning, I got a phone call from my dad. And all all I can remember him saying is, she's gone. My beautiful wife is gone. It rips my heart to think about that because I know that one of her dying wishes was to take her last few breaths in his arms. I know that that wish was granted because Whenever my dad talks about it, which isn't very often, and shame on me because I don't talk about it nearly as enough as I probably should. And I've just come to the realization today that I need to realize that I need to go through the grieving process. I've n- I don't think I've honestly ever gone through it. But... Every time my dad talks about it, I can see the fear come across his face. A fear of the unknown, not knowing what the future lies in store for him. As you know, they had been together since they were 16, 17 years old. I think maybe it was 18. They got married at 19 or at 20. And then I came along, but you have to, you have to be strong. And you know, over the last, 
11 to 19 years, I have tried to be the strong one. Tried to be the rock that holds it all together. You know, because, you know, as a guy, you know, the, the th- typical thing is, you know, well, I'm a guy, I got to hold it all together. I got to be the tough guy. I, nothing's going to, nothing's going to drag me down. I can do this. Well, you know what? It's okay. It's okay to let it go. But yet you still have to hold it together. You've got to hold it together for your spouse, for your children, for your parents. But you have to know that when life gives you a credit card that there are 40 some more cards in that deck and when you run out of cards somebody will be there to help reshuffle them and deal out a new set so my message is this and I've I've pled with you many times before for all the women out there to check themselves men I call upon you to hound the women in your life hound them make sure that they are checking themselves and women do the same thing to the men men get breast cancer too And a lot of the times in men, it, it's a little more drastic. It, it tends to move a little faster. But you know what? With the advances in medicine that we've been able to accomplish, these things are getting better. We may, we may not ever come up with a cure-all, end-all for breast cancer. But you know what? Every October, I talk about it. And I'll talk about it throughout the year, don't get me wrong. But every year, every October, the, the StaffordVoice.com, we, we, turn, we turn the website pink. I do it out of honor for my mom because I know that that's just one way that I can let her know that I'm still thinking about her and that it can be a subtle reminder for those that may have forgotten the whole year. And when they show up in October and they look at something, they look at an article or whatever they're perusing over at the website, they see that it's pink and they know that's because of breast cancer month, that they're reminded, oh, I got to go do my checkup. So I'm asking you, men, women, please check yourselves. I would, I would really, really appreciate it. If you need help getting to a clinic or getting to a doctor to get an exam, please contact me. I will make sure you have the means to get it done. If you catch it early enough... Your chances of being able to beat it are that much better. And your first line of defense is you. Okay, enough about all of the mushy, mushy stuff. Because I, I, honestly, I don't know how much longer I can handle it without winding up and breaking down live on the air. I mean, it, it could make for really good or really bad radio, who knows. But... ISIS. I don't know if you saw this, but ISIS is destroying ancient landmarks. Sunday, they blew up the Ark of Triumph. Now, this was known to locals as the quote-unquote bridge of the desert. Back in the day, it linked the Roman Empire to Persia. Well, 
Professor Mahmoun Abdelkaram, Syria's director of antiquities, said, quote, They're destroying building by building. And within three to six months at this pace, we're going to lose Palmyra. Now, if you know anything about what ISIS is trying to accomplish, they want to get rid of anything, any reminder at all of the history that has pushed them to the side, that has slowed the triumphant return of Islam, if you will. Any of that stuff, they will get rid of it because it's a constant reminder. So that's why they're out there in um, in Syria. That's why they're out there in all these other places destroying these landmarks, these antiques. It's horrific what they're doing just to history itself. They actually should embrace it as a reminder that says, okay, look at where we've come from. But that's by far not their mindset. They totally don't even get that. But it's what they do. I, I just... Unreal. You know, here's here's a group of people that instead of playing the cards they're dealt, they turn the whole deck over and say, ah, screw it. They blow them all up. We're not playing cards. We're done. We win. Ha <laughs> ha. Uno. Jackpot. Monopoly. Whatever. They don't care. It's their way or the highway. Speaking of their way or the highway, you know, every week leading up to up to the actual election, we will continue to put together something we call Campaign Roundup. We will take some of the best of the best of the not so good in some cases sound bites from some of the some of the uh, candidates that are running and let you know what they're saying it, and it'll give you a better idea because after all the, these guys are out there hour after hour after hour and all they do is talk and talk and talk and oh my god it will drive you nuts trust me because i'm sitting here and i'm over the weekend i'm going through countless hours of audio trying to break it down and pick out some of the good some of the bad some of the ignoranus and i feel like a zombie has attacked me it's kind of scary sometimes but this week i i'm sorry it's it's a little longer than we would like but it gives you a better understanding of what the candidates are saying, who they are, and where they stand on some of the current issues. So this week, here is our campaign roundup. Uh, he said Muslims are a problem. By the way, most Muslims, I know many, are great people. Well, I think a certain segment are certainly a problem. You know, a lot of people think you can end up with World War III over the Middle East. And unless our country gets tough and smart, and unless we have the right leadership done, we're in big trouble. It diminishes America's importance. In the eyes of the world, we're beginning to look like a junior partner under Barack Obama. You saw that this week play out at the United Nations. And nations in that region, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Turkey, uh, Jordan, and others, look and, and, and say, you know, America, we've had a tough time getting them under Barack Obama to do anything meaningful. In fact, all they talk about is what they're not going to do or how they're going to get out of here. Maybe Russia would be a good partner to work with. You're looking to something as basic as the United States Constitution. Of course, you're right. Uh, the problem is Republican leadership begins from the perspective that they can accomplish nothing and they're not willing to try to accomplish anything for conservatives. You know, well, we've got Republican leadership in both houses that are fighting for nothing that they promised the 
the American people they would fight for. The basic problem, Sean, you've got ostensibly two sides. On one side, the Democrats. Barack Obama and the Democrats, they are absolutely committed to fighting for liberal principles. Barack Obama will practically crawl over broken glass with a knife between his teeth. He never, ever, ever gives up. He's like the Terminator. And, and, and what does Republican leadership do? It begins every negotiation with surrendering at the outset. And, and, you know, it all plays out because Republican leadership says very innocuously, there will never, ever, ever be a shutdown. Now, to most folks, that sounds like that might be reasonable. The problem is when you're dealing with a radical on the other side, Obama's discovered all he has to do is whisper the word shutdown and Republican leadership will run for the hills. So Obama says, if you Republicans in Congress don't fund 100 percent of Obamacare, if you don't do nothing for the millions of people being hurt by that failed law, I, Barack Obama, will veto funding for the entire federal government. And Republican leadership says, we give up, we'll fund Obamacare. Senator, He does the same thing on amnesty, he does the same thing on Planned Parenthood, he does the same thing on this catastrophic Iranian deal, and Republican leadership leads the fight to fund every single one of Obama's big government programs. All funding under the Constitution begins in Congress, the power of the purse. The problem is leadership won't use it, they surrender at the outset. It, it, you know, it's the reason we have no appropriation bills. Democrats are blocking them, but why are they blocking them? Because they know if Congress passes no appropriations bills, we'll end up at the end of the fiscal year, we'll have a continuing resolution, and Republican leadership will surrender and fund every one of Obama's priorities. So if you're a Democrat, why would you let Congress operate when you know that Republican leadership will join with Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama? By the way, we're not a nation of laws anymore. We're a nation of rules that are promulgated by a bunch of unaccountable, unelected bureaucrats who answer to no one. Planned Parenthood is six hundred million dollars. It is an abomination what is going on in Planned Parenthood, and they cannot and will you not shut deny the government this. Down over that? Yes, I would, and I would force President Obama to explain why he is willing over six hundred million dollars to permit taxpayer funding of the butchery of babies. We need leadership that actually leads right now both Senate and House leadership, they believe that, that we must surrender to Obama on everything. It's why people are so frustrated. And, and, you know, I'll note, you know, we've had now two Republican presidential debates. Every candidate talks about how they're standing up to Washington. Every candidate talked about how they didn't want to fund Planned Parenthood. Well, you know, the fight that's happening right now today, none of those other 10 candidates on that stage are, are anywhere to be found. Okay, all right. You know, if you're missing some of the talk that's over in the chat at k98talk.com slash chat dash room, you're missing out. I mean, that's, wow. I mean, I, I have so much love in my heart for each person that has shared their personal stories right now. Um, I am beyond words. Uh, so much so that um, I really need to take a break. But before we do, yeah. You know, and look, here's the thing. When I tell you about this, I want to tell you because I care. And you know, the last thing we we need is another crowdfunding site. But we really do need one. Because everywhere you turn these days, everybody is crying the politically correct game. Well, what if I told you that there was a place, a place that, that put aside all the PC crap. They put all that stuff aside, and this place was still trustworthy. They held true to conservative and libertarian ideals that you and I both share. And you know what I'm talking about here. A company that reflects constitutional values. And they're not going to cave in and cancel your campaign because someone gets offended. Look, this is a company that believes in you as much as I do. So much so that they're willing to put a little of their own money where your mouth is. Now, look, the first 10 signups who reach $100 in contributions, get this, they'll put in $10 to help you succeed. And it, look, it's not too good to be true. Trust me. These, 
the guy that has started this up is a quality, quality patriot. I mean, he's... This is a guy you want on your side. So here's what I'm asking you to do. I need you to head over to rwnjfunding.com rwnjfunding.com and start your campaign today. Now when we come back from a break, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the changes that are getting ready to probably take effect that will affect over a million members of the military and their families. And it's buried in a um, multi-hundred page defense policy bill. When we come back, we're going to tackle some of that. We'll be right back. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? But you got a business. You didn't build that. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I mean, well, I don't have that too often. Steady. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, and on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Eastern and 11 Central here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. Red Nation Rising brings you Town Hall Radio. From a single tweet to $3 million a month, our community is a force to be reckoned with on social media. So don't miss our show Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on K98 Talk. Our chat room is our co-host, and you ask the question. Join us and be heard. So get ready to sound off on Red Nation Rising Radio. No one else is going to do it for you. Is he alive? Whether you're an employee or business owner, when it comes to the correct course of legal action, it's the first step that is important. And make that first step with attorney Ted Hong. You need someone you can trust and has the experience you need when it comes to workplace and employment law. If you've lost your employment due to discrimination, false accusations, or being denied benefits, you need Ted Hong. Or if you're an employer who wants to ensure compliance with workplace regulations and labor contracts, you need Ted Hong. Ted and his team also cover family and property law and estate litigation as well. Ted has over 30 years of experience, and him and his amazing legal team will provide you cost-effective legal consultation and make the experience all about you and your needs. For more information or to set up a consultation, contact the law office of Ted Hong at 808-933-1919 or visit tedhonglaw.com. Ted Hong, an experienced and principled attorney you can trust. 808-933-1919 or tedhonglaw.com. I don't know about you, but I'm not the type of guy that jumps into anything without first doing my research. And when I was looking for a holster, I'll admit I was having one heck of a time. You know what I'm talking about here. You find one you like, you try it on, it would be clunky. Another one fits good, but costs way too much. So you try on one last holster, it was slim, lightweight, priced right, but lo and behold, you slide your pistol in, and it falls right out. So what do you do? You've tried all these mass market holsters. Well, go custom. I know what you're thinking. I thought it too. Too pricey. Wrong. My guy over at Rebel Road Tactical will not only put together the perfect fitting, hand-molded, hand-assembled, custom Kydex holster, but you'll get it at an affordable price. Don't wait. Contact Rebel Road Tactical today at 682-217-4579. Again, that's 682-217-4579. The dramatic reinvention of Top Training. Here come the spa dolphins. The only thing that can cure racism is Robert E. Lee's penis. Who named this cat? Limberfoot McCubbin. A Trump Biden debate. Plugs versus rugs. <laughs> <laughs> Real serious nonsense. The show's so bad, you'll laugh at us. The worst podcast. We obviously hold that title. Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern, K98 Talk. 
Call now. 913-440-4889. Question, so let's get right to it. Anna, if you'd stand up here, this is Anna Birch, Secretary Clinton, 45-year-old Democrat, has an 8-year-old son, and has a question for you about guns. That's right. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Yes. Um, like so many, I'm very distressed about the recent mass shooting last week in Oregon, and frankly, a bit ashamed to be the, about the uncontrollable gun violence in our country right now, especially compared to other developed nations. Um, again, my son is eight. I'm nervous to talk to him about it. You know, there's regular lockdown drills at his school now. I mean, it's part of life. Um, and yet, I feel like I know I'm not alone in saying enough is enough. And I would like to know, as president, how what specifically you would do for gun control, or gun control. Well, first Thank of all, I, I share your, your feelings and you know, just this sense that we have to take action. You have these terrible incidents like we just had in Oregon, children being killed in school, people in a Bible study in a church being murdered and on campuses, and so many others. And then there are about 92 deaths uh, by guns every day, and most of them don't make the headlines. Uh, homicides, accidents, suicide, and there are more than 33,000 a year. If anything else were killing 33,000 of our people, we would all come together and say, hey, what are we going to do about this? And so I've introduced my platform for dealing with uh, gun violence because I think we've got to, as a nation, do exactly what you said, enough. What do we have to try to accomplish. We need universal background checks. We know that they will work. We need to, we need to uh, close what's called the Charleston loophole. The young man who killed the nine people in the church in Charleston, um, there's a loophole in the Brady Bill that if you go to try to get a gun and they don't finish the background check in three days, you can get the gun. They were still trying to find out about this young man. It turns out he did have a criminal record. He wasn't eligible to get a gun, but because of, quote, the loophole, he was able to. We need to close the gun show loophole. You know, uh, about, um, I think it's 40% or so of the gun sales in America are done online. They're done in gun shows. Uh, they're done by people selling out of the back of their cars, basically. And we know where we enforce uh, that kind of check. We do keep guns out of the hands of people who are domestic abusers or in a, in a hot rage, you know, go out to get a gun because of a domestic dispute. And we have far more women being killed by their partners than anywhere else in the world. Uh, it's not that we don't have disputes everywhere else in the world, but they become lethal. Oh, my God. Shut that woman up. Oh, heavens to Murgatroyd's. Oh, yeah, and I almost for I I actually forgot that I had that in queue, but I don't, talk a little bit more about that later. But oh yes, because after all, you know, that guy went nuts on that campus shooting people because we don't have enough gun control laws. Oh, yes. I mean, oh, yes. I'm, we really need, that's that's how we should all go out and protest. If we don't have enough gun control laws, by all means, go out, find a gun, buy one. You know, obtain one however you have to. Because you know, we all know that um, criminals follow the law but besides that go get a gun and go crazy yeah that makes a lot of flipping sense you ignoranus and then she tries to spin it like oh well this is a women's issue because men you know they get angry and they go out and they buy guns because the woman the woman makes him upset and he's not smart enough to control himself so he goes out and he grabs a gun and he goes on a wild shooting rampage. Arr! Makes me so mad. Oh. Bang bang. Pew pew. Oh, for crying out loud. No, I'm sorry. It doesn't quite work that way. The last thing we really need is more gun control laws. And the fact that that lady stands up and says that she has an eight-year-old that she's scared to 
talk about guns to. She's how what parent what sane parent is afraid to talk to their kid? I've never been afraid to talk to my kid. Never been scared of anything to talk to him about. Never. And actually, you could ask my son, and he'll tell you. He will tell you, um, no, actually, my dad really kind of scares me, actually. Sorry, I, I dropped my dessert on the floor. We uh, had some leftover uh, Nutella cinnamon checks, Mex, Muddy Buddies, whatever you call it, but we added Nutella. It's heaven. Anyway... I'm I'm not I'm gonna save some of it for later because I don't want to get going right now. So I teased you a little earlier about some changes that could go into effect and affect over a million members of the military and their families. These changes are buried in the defense policy bill that, get this, is roughly 1,915 pages long. So buried somewhere in all that crap is this. Uh, that's all I can say. It's this. It's crap. It was passed by the House, 270 votes to 156, and the Senate is scheduled to vote this week. So, what's in it? Well, we're only going to talk about four things. First one, retirement. Under the new plan, service members can put a percentage of their pay into 401k type accounts, and the government will match those contributions up to 5% over 26 years. They're going to call these uh, thrift savings plans. And when, when service members currently get ready to retire, their benefit is calculated by multiplying the average of their last three years of pay by 2.5. But if this bill goes into effect and gets voted in favor, that multiplier would be reduced to only two. So, a decrease in retirement benefits. But don't worry! Listen, point number two, we are going to provide financial literacy training for the troops. There you go. That's it. That's all we had to do. Provide financial literacy training for the troops because after all you you know i mean hello knock on head um i'm dumb i'm in the military i don't know what to do with money <sighs> don't even get me started pay raise <laughs> if you want to call it that. A 1.3% increase in basic pay. Lawmakers were pretty silent on the pay increase, leaving it to set itself at 2.3% through an automatic calculation that's based on a government cost index. So basically, this quote-unquote government cost index automatically calculates it and it's roughly a 2.3% um, pay raise every year. Well, get this. The president, oh, this guy loves our troops so much. He loves our military. I don't know if you know this. I mean, he, he loves the military. <laughs> However, uh, even though he's got the authority to set the increase... Earlier this year, he set it at a measly 1.3%. Now, in 2014 and 2015, they got 1% pay raise. 
1%. I know that sounds like a broken record, but seriously, these people are putting their lives on the line each and every day, and we give them a 1% pay raise. Not 1.3, not 2.3, no, 1. But he loves the military so much, he raised it 0.3%. How do you even calculate that? I mean, hell, they only make like $15,000 a year anyway. Is it going to be enough that they even see it? I mean, that's like 50 bucks more a year. Boy, they should be grateful. And yeah, I know, I'm, I'm not being, I'm being dramatically incorrect on my math, okay? But have no fear. Their pharmacy co-pays are going to go up. Oh, yes. Under the bill, the co-pay for drugs bought at retail drugstores will increase from $8 to $10 for generics and 20 they're going to go from $20 to $24 for brand name prescriptions. So, that measly 1. Point, that, that measly 1.3% increase in pay, guess what? You're just going to spend it on on your um prescription drugs. <laughs> oh, isn't that awesome? It is so flipping sweet. Yeah, there goes your pay raise. That's right, slick. Yeah, you don't get a pay raise. Guess what? You just lost money because everything else gets a little more expensive. <sighs> it doesn't matter. The president loves the military. He loves the military as much as Donald Trump loves each and every other person that he's running against, which is like zero. Um, you know what? We are going to take a break again. I know, it seems like we just took one, but got some good stuff lined up. When we come back, we're going to cover On This Day in History. And yes, yes, we will get to who said that. You know, right here on The Stafford Voice. We'll be right back. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. Not on my watch, our military service members say, as they volunteer to serve, as they move out, stand firm, and take fire. So not on our watch, we say, to the severely ill or injured veterans who can't get the care they deserve to live full and independent lives, even when there's no government funding or a nursing home seems like the only option. We won't leave one warrior behind not on our watch. Join us at findwwp.org. According to me and Bunny, this show's not big. It's huge! Uh, Mr. Trump, what are your thoughts on how should we go about making sure we can protect innocent life in this country? We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. Donald, Donald, question right over here, over here. What are you going to do as president in regards to Common Core? What actions are you going to take? We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. That is like the, he can say that for anything. Yes! That. It's just <laughs> insert <laughs> issue. A lot of things. Donald, what are we going to do for lunch? We're going to be looking at a lot of different, <laughs> different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there we're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things it's according to me and bunny wednesday nights 9 p.m eastern right here on k98 talk conservative in a world of liberal the stafford voice all right we're back yes this is the stafford voice i am your host daniel stafford and you know what? One of the things I love to do in my spare time is I love to read. But 
unfortunately, I'm always on the go. And I can't, honestly, even though I sat there all weekend and was listening to a church conference and watching a church conference, I mean, it was fantastic, honestly. I mean, I wish I could share with you all the notes. And if if enough of you force me to, I'll I'll snap some pictures of my notes and I'll share them with you. Because it was, it was just a fascinating conference. I mean, it really opened my eyes. I mean, but another thing that opens my eyes is books. But even though I don't always have time to sit down, stop, and read, I've got a smartphone, I've got a tablet, and a subscription to audible.com. Yes, you can be driving you can be cutting the grass, you, you could be going to the bathroom, you, but you, no matter what, you can get caught up on all those great books you want to read, but you can't, because you just don't have the time, and if you're like me, and you're super busy, go out, get a subscription to audible.com, as a listener to the show, and also to According to Me and Bunny, or real serious nonsense because you're a listener you're going to be able to get free 30 days no strings attached trial you're also going to get two free books with this offer and because it's part of Amazon there's like hundreds and thousands of books to choose from I mean it, really all of the newest releases are there at your fingertips and a lot of the books get this are read by the actual authors it really is awesome I mean, look here's what you need to do in order to take advantage of this give you two ways you can either go over to politattainment.net click the audible trial banner or you can go to audibletrial.com slash politattainment. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash politattainment and get started today. Okay, so one of the things that I was reading about today, funny that we go from books to reading, is I was reading up about what happened on this day in history and two fascinating things one of which is a bigger project that I'm working on but nonetheless on this day in history General George Washington he was he was writing to the president of the Continental Congress which at the time was John Jay and he said I have now a painful though a necessary duty to perform respecting Dr. Church, the Director General of the hospital. Immediately, and he goes on to say he immediately secured the woman, but for a long time she was proof against every threat and persuasion to discover the author. However, at length she was brought to a confession and named Dr. Church. I then immediately secured him and all his papers, unquote. So who was Dr. Church? Well, Dr. Benjamin Church was the Surgeon General of the Continental Army. Dr. Benjamin Church, he was... Dr. Church was a renowned um, physician in Boston. He was also active in the um, Massachusetts Committee of Safety, and he, he served as a member of the Provincial Congress. Well, in July 1775, Washington named Church the first Surgeon General of the Continental Army. But again, a confession, uh, what he was saying earlier, a confession for what? Well, Washington somehow intercepted a coded letter that was to uh, Lieutenant General Sir Thomas Gage. He was the British commander-in-chief for North America. Well, Church faced court-martial on October 4th, and despite his innocence plea, so... Actually, on this day in history, October 5th was um, the, the day that Washington wrote 
to John Jay and said what we had said earlier. Well, despite Church's innocence plea, it was determined that the letter included Church's statement of allegiance to the British crown. He was charged with treason, convicted, sentenced to a life in prison, and he became sick while incarcerated and was exiled to the West Indies. Well, it just so happens that the ship he was traveling on was believed to have been lost at sea. On November 7th, not too long after the conviction, the Continental Congress added a mandate for the death penalty as punishment for acts of espionage to the, quote, Articles of War. That is fascinating. You know, we always hear about articles of treason, articles of espionage. Well, now you kind of know some of the background that goes along with the articles of espionage and how that came to be. Well, it just so happens that on this day in history was when um, General George Washington wrote to um, John Jay, who happened to be the um, president of the Continental Congress, and said um, that he had the duty uh, and, and that it was a painful duty to basically do what he had to do and secure um, Dr. Benjamin Church. Absolutely fascinating story. Something else that happened on this day in history happened in 1787. This is the one that is part of a bigger project that I'm working on, and I just want to share with you um, some of the things that I found in my studies. Well, so what am I reading from? Well, on this day in history, 1787, um, Sentinel-1, as you'll recall, was the first of the Anti-Federalist Papers. Um, and it really is fascinating when you go back and you, you try and figure out the mindset of, of the individuals at that time and what was happening behind the scenes and what went into it, how, what shaped their minds. It really is a fascinating time to, to study. And so let me touch on a couple of things that I found. Um, and again, these are quotes from Sentinel-1, the first of the published Anti-Federalist Papers. He says, uh, if I use my pen with the boldness of a freeman, it is because I know that the liberty of the press yet remains unviolated, and juries yet are judges. And he goes on to say, it behooves you well to consider, uninfluenced by the authority of names, it ought to be dispassionately and deliberately examined. Again, they're talking about the, um, the Constitution um, as it was being presented and debated. Uh, if ever free and unbiased discussion was proper or necessary, it is on such an occasion. All the blessings of liberty and the dearest privileges of freemen are now at stake and dependent on your present conduct. The wealthy and ambitious who in every community think they have a right to lord it over their fellow creatures. All right. Stuff is just fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Um... Again, I hope that um, I can get a little farther into my research and um, start giving you some of my findings and, and, and make you more a part of, of this bigger project because I'm super, super excited about it. Something I'm not excited about... Yes, that's right. You know, sometimes I get excited talking about this stuff, but this week is who, on, on who said that is none other than Miss Barfbag. I, I she makes me sick, really. I mean, you heard a little bit from her earlier this evening, but she said something else. Um. But again, if you're a first-time listener and you don't really know what who said that is, let me explain. It's somebody in the media, somebody on the campaign trail, 
an elected official. Look, it doesn't matter. Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, libertarian. It does not matter. If you say something that proves that you are completely stuck on stupid, guess what? We are going to call you out. And this week is none other than, wow, I I almost called her Miss Piggy. Almost called her Miss Piggy. And if enough of you like the nickname, then we'll start using it. But I want you to hear what she had to say. Uh, I think it was earlier today. Check this out. This epidemic of gun violence knows no boundaries, knows no limits of any kind. And when this happens, people are quick to say that they offer their thoughts and prayers. That's not enough. How many people have to die before we actually act? Before we come together as a nation? You know, on the Republican side, Mr. Trump was asked about it and said something like, you know, things like that happen in the world. And Governor Bush said, yeah, stuff happens. No. That, that's, a, that's an admission of defeat and surrender to a problem that is killing 33,000 Americans. It's time for us to say, wait a minute, we're better than this. Our country is better than this. Oh, yes. Oh, I love it. Love it. Listen. Okay, we've got an epidemic that's killing 33,000 people a year, and that's called gun violence. Okay, um, yeah, no, let's pause for a moment and do the math. I realize your liberal common core math will probably take you a year to come up with the answer, but go over to a tried and true abacus and you will realize that Planned Parenthood is literally plugging in the shop vac, shoving it up the middle between women's legs and sucking the life out from inside of her at a rate that far exceeds 33,000 due to gun violence. And for the most part, Hell, half of those happened in Chicago last night or over the weekend. Joking aside, I th please do not get me wrong here. I'm not defending Jeb Bush. I'm not defending Donald Trump. But yes, stuff happens. This isn't about gun violence. This isn't about gun control. It's about a sick the sickness of a mind. This is about somebody who wanted to go down in a blaze of glory. This was about someone who wanted fame, who wanted their name put in the history books. This isn't about gun control. Look, if we really wanted to make a change, let's go after Planned Parenthood. That is, by far and large, killing more innocent lives than gun crimes. For that, Miss Hillary Killary Clinton, who has many people's blood on her hands, you are completely stuck on stupid. Now, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this week. And God willing, I, your host, Daniel Stafford, host of the Stafford Voice, will be back next week. Follow me on Twitter at Stafford Voice. Look me up over on the Facebooks by searching for the Stafford Voice. Give me a like. I'd love it. Email all of your questions, comments, concerns, hate mail, love mail, whatever it is, to the Stafford Voice at gmail.com. Again, that is the Stafford Voice at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your time. And until next week, Thanks, and God bless.